Hello and welcome everyone to my first development preview of the new project that I'm working on, a robotic vacuum cleaner based on a voice AI. I thought that it would be a good idea to make this type of video to better capture the step-by-step -step creation of the robot, as well as to collect your feedback in the comment section. Maybe you have a suggestion or an idea, you are welcome to take part in this project. Let's jump right to the preview. It all started when I was randomly looking on the Hexter website, here you can also find all my other robots, when I have seen this contest organized by Infineon, one of the largest semiconductor manufacturers worldwide. The main idea was to combine AI and IoT with their microcontrollers to renovate a household object in the everyday life. So I went with the robotic cleaner. Why? I'm going to be honest, the student life is hard and you don't have time to clean and do all of this kind of stuff. It may or may not happen to have so much dust in my room that I can measure it with a ruler. So this idea seemed like the best fit for this contest as well as for me. So that being said, I designed the project based on a Moscow backlog. In short, for those who don't know, the Moscow backlog prioritizes certain aspects of the project. You have the must-haves, most important should-haves, could-haves, and won't-have. In short, the robot has a circular body, with the, the diameter of around 32 cm. I don't want to use a camera with object detection, so I'll need to use all kinds of sensors available and suitable. As for the cleaning, it will be done in three stages. The first stage is represented by the side brush. Its role is to redirect the dust and dirt to the center of the robot. It also can clean corners. After that, Positioned at the center of the robot are the two main brushes. They get the dirt and bigger objects inside the dust bag. The last cleaning stage is represented by the vacuum, which gets what is left of the dust and ventilates the air in the dust bag in such a way that all the dust will be kept near the exit port. In that way, more dust can get into the bin and won't block the entrance. In this preview, I'll just briefly show the first two stages. I made a CAD design of the robot in a new software, Fusion 360, which allowed me to make advanced forms and designs in lesser time than in my other projects. The concept of this robot is simple and rather interesting. I made it in modules. Each module has its own design and doesn't affect other modules. Also, each module should fit in the body of the robot even if its design is changed. You'll see in a minute why this was very helpful. Examples of modules are the brushes, side brush, main brush, dust bag, and wheels. As for the body itself, it has a circular form so that when the robot goes against or parallel to the walls, it won't get stuck. It has two wheels at the back and a ball caster to the front, similar to my line follower model. Regarding the modules, they are useful because you can change the designs without having to replace other components. For example, take into account this side brush. I made the mistake to use a motor which was too fast for what I wanted. For example, see the old model and the new one with the replacement motor. So I just replaced the bracket of the motor without replacing the connectors to the side bottom of the robot. As for the module of the main brushes, I made a design based on threaded rods so that I can position the brushes higher or lower than the ground. Maybe in the future I will know exactly where I want them to be or I will implement motors to take care of the positioning, so the changes I want to make overall in the design are minimal. The contest I have registered for had some hardware requirements to use their microcontrollers from their PSOC 6 family and use a sensitive sensor, PDM microphone, pressure sensor, radar sensor, etc. Only one. Because I was on a budget, I went with a prototype development board that also has a microphone. This board delivers dual cores, each with its processor. It also supports full-speed USB, capacitive sensing with CapSense, and the PDM-PCM digital microphone interface. The CapSense is composed of a touchscreen slider and two buttons, which I'll use as an onboard user interface. As for the microphone, I'll integrate it with the Pico Voice Voice AI as a remote user interface, which I will show later in this video. As for the other hardware, it is not currently in the final stage, so I might change them in the future. But as for now, I use Polulu motors for the wheels and brushes, and Polulu motor drivers and voltage regulators. Now let's get into the fun part. 
the implementation of what I have said until now and the first testers. So right now, I have a robot that doesn't have a brain or eyes. So I thought that I will use first three infrared sensors, placed at the front of the robot. The current algorithm now is simple. When it detects an obstacle, it goes back a little, turns left a little, and then goes forward until the next obstacle. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so there are a lot of problems. First, the sensor only detects things in a line, so there are blind spots. Second, it cannot go over small obstacles, for example a carpet, so there are already severe problems with this implementation. Along with the three infrared sensors, I also implemented a bumper. This bumper is made of 8 buttons placed along 180 degrees on a base and then between every two buttons I have small plates that when pressed at any point also a button will be, will be pressed. I could have connected each button to an input pin and I could have gotten the exact position of the impact but for now I have just put them at the same pin so that if the robot hits anything at any point of the bumper it will go backwards and then turn. An example of the wiring of the buttons at the same pin can be seen in this demo. Let's see how the implementation with the bumper goes. Clearly it's better, but it still needs a lot of work. Let's leave the navigation at this point and move on to the voice AI. Because I am using such a microcontroller, implementing a Pico Voice voice AI is actually pretty simple because of the software Modus Toolbox, which I use to code and program these development boards, offers me the sample code, which contains some wake words and a list of instructions regarding light control in the house. This Pico Voice AI functions in the following way. You first say the wake up word, for example Alexa, and then you say the instruction you want, turn on the light. To customize the instructions, you have uh, two steps to do. You first need to create a model and then train it. It can be easily done directly in the console offered by Pico Voice. After that, you just need to put your trained header file in your project and that's all. Let's see how this AI will work with my custom model. Bot reboot. Go forward for 3 seconds. Bot reboot. Bot reboot. Turn left. Bot reboot. Clean. Bot reboot. Clean the kitchen. Bot reboot. Bot reboot. Stop cleaning. Bot reboot. Clean the house. Bot reboot. Bot reboot. Go shopping. So this is what I have to offer in the first development preview of this project. 
There is a lot to cover. I want to add encoders to the wheels, maybe a machine learning algorithm so that the robot can learn the layout of the house. I still need to work on the CAD design. I need to integrate the AI with the rest of the robot. So in summary, there's a lot to be done and all presented in this video is still under development. So, if you have any suggestions or questions regarding this video, you can ask them in the comments, where I read every one of them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!